Hey everybody, welcome to T-Roy Cooks and welcome to another Tuesday chatting with old T-Roy here. I appreciate you joining us. Uh, I told y'all last week I was going to kind of mix up some stuff. Sometimes I'm going to do these tapes, sometimes I'm going to do them live, maybe a mix of the two. So today we're just doing it taped and I uh, hope y'all understand. I just had some things come up that I needed to do later this evening. It is actually Tuesday afternoon, so hopefully I can get this thing edited and up before uh, 8 p.m. Central tonight. Anyway, I'm so glad you could join us. So we're going to answer some questions. We're going to do this old style like I used to do on my Thursday chess before I went live. We're going to answer some of your questions. I pulled up some of those that y'all left me from the past videos. Cheers to everybody out there. Let's get to going. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, first question is from Jamie Satterley. Jamie, I appreciate the support. You've been around a long time, bro. It says, hey, T-Roy, great cook and a great Q&A. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. It says, I enjoy hunting and camping. Wondering, what's a great portable smoker or grill? Love the channel. Smoke on, brother. Cheers from Frankfurt, Kentucky. There you go. Appreciate it, Jamie. Cheers to you, bro. Portable grill or smoker. I, I'd say, man, you can't go wrong with uh, just the regular Weber, whatever they call it, the little small one, you know, the little 14-inch one. That's a nice little kettle grill. Ooh, you know what I got that's also really, really good? Is uh, that flip and flop grill. I, I did a video on the flip and flop grill doing some chicken or something. I can't remember. I need to use that thing again. That's a great little uh, charcoal grill, man. And it folds apart. It's, it's like two inches flat when you fold it all together. Check it out. Flip and flop grill. I'll put a link below. Uh, not sponsored or anything. I just I went out and bought it myself, and I love it. It's good stuff. But, yeah, the Weber. Can't go wrong with Weber, man. Hope that helps, Jamie. Next question is from Mike Ellert. He says, hi, Troy. Thanks for another chat. Have you ever tried to simulate the pit barrel cooker with the Weber Smoky Mountain by removing the water pan or simulate the Weber Smoky Mountain by adding a water pan to the pit barrel? I think it would make for some interesting videos for those of us who don't have the space or money for both. Thanks again, and cheers to you. Hey, cheers to you, Mike. That's a great question, man. And I'm just drinking my usual... Willen, this is uh, from Brazos, Brazos Valley Brewing Company. It's a Mosaic Pale Ale. Y'all seen me use this before. Let's see if it gives me an ABV on here. It's, it's quite potent here. So, uh, oh, 5.2 percent. Yeah, 5.2. I like it though. It's not. It's not like an IPA. It's not super hoppy, and it's got a little, little bit of that grapefruit hoppiness flavor. But I like it. And it's hot out here, man. It's going to be 103 later this afternoon. That's one another reason why I'm wanting to tape this one, man, because it's only about 98 right now. Another 4 or 5 degrees. It, ooh, that's hot. Anyway, um, did I answer your question? No, I didn't. Mike, uh, I have done that recently, in fact, uh, probably a month or month and a half ago. I cooked the, uh, the brisket, hot and fast, Harry Sue style, five-hour brisket. And... Uh, I took the water pan out of the Weber Smoky Mountain, and we cooked the brisket for a couple hours or until the bark set, and then we put the water pan back in the Weber Smoky Mountain without the water in it, just empty water pan, and then we lowered the temp on the Weber Smoky Mountain, wrapped the brisket, and finished cooking the brisket. Five hour total cook time for 15 and a half pound brisket, and I swear if you had the brisket slow and slow and hot and, hot and fast side by side the way I did it, folks, if it was a blind taste test, you would not be able to tell the difference. That was awesome. Awesome. Got to thank Harry Sue for that. As far as uh, putting a wood pan in a pit barrel cooker, I have not tried that. I would assume that it would work okay if you find the right size pan. Uh, yeah, I guess you could. I'm trying to think. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything down there to hold it. You may have to drill some holes and put like some screws in there, some bolts to hold the water pan up off the top of the charcoal. Anyway, it's doable, and it, it would work just like a Weber Smoky Mountain, in, in my opinion. I think. Y'all give it a shot. Let me know. Next question from Steve 00736-2436. He says, awesome channel, T-Roy. I appreciate that, Steve, man. Appreciate it. He says, what's your method of cleaning the creosote buildup on the Wichita after several cooks? And these are some older questions, folks. I think this one came from episode 54, I think. That's a while back. Half a year or so, maybe. <clears throat> but anyway, I still got them. I'll answer them. He says, I've heard some remove the heat management plate and burn lump charcoal in the bottom of the firebox without the grate, but bring the temp up into the 400-degree 400, 400 range in the cooking chamber for a couple of hours. Then all the buildup 
becomes brittle and just flakes off once it's cooled off. Thanks for all the great Thursday chats. Enjoy all the cooking videos as well. I appreciate that, Steve. Thanks very much, man. You know, creosote will burn. I mean, I've actually had friends who let too much buildup go on in their pit, and they lit that baby up, and it got too hot. And when they lifted the lid, it was like backdraft. That fire just came out at them and singed their hairs on their face and on their head. That's not, that's not cool. So I don't know if I would want to go the 400-degree route trying to do it, do it like you would a, a, a you know, self-cleaning oven or something. My preferred method would be to get you a propane torch and like a, a putty knife, a stiff one. Just heat the creosote with a propane torch and then right behind it go and scrape off. Because it's going to be like tar, man. That's basically what it is. It's just creosote. It's going to scrape off like tar. Okay? Now, the flaky stuff, sure, you're going to get some of that too. Uh, that's going to be more like uh, carbon buildup from the smoke and humidity and stuff within the cooking chamber. And uh, some of the iron flaking off, you know. But you can clean that with just a wire brush or a bristle brush of some kind if you don't want to use the wire brushes. So that's pretty easier. Heck, just get you an old shop rag and wipe it down real good. You know, scrub it a little bit on the inside. But I, I don't know if I'd go the 400 degree route, man. Seriously, that's asking for trouble in my opinion. From I haven't done it myself, but listening to others, I wouldn't go that route. But it's a great question. Get your propane torch and a putty knife. Uh, let me see, or a paint scraper, you know. W. Stewart, he says, hi, Troy. How do you decide which smoker to use for a given cook? That's a very good question as well, and I, I think I've had this one before, but let's keep going. He says, do you feel certain smokers you have are better for certain meats? Eh, not necessarily, not necessarily. He says, for example, let's stick with the basics of ribs, butts, brisket, chicken. And when, when would you go to the Weber Smoke Mountain versus the Yoda versus the Pit, etc.? I now have a Weber Smoky Mountain and a propane offset, and I can use either, and starting to wonder when and how to choose. You know, uh, man, it's, uh, yeah, I have talked about this one before. I try to use a pit that I haven't used in a while, you know? I mean, there's times when I may do two, three, four cooks on my Weber kettle, and then I'll leave it alone for a month. And I may do another cook on my Weber Smoky Mountain, then the next cook on my Yoder, or now my Lone Star Grill, or my Pit Barrel Cooker, or the Flip Flop Grill, uh, also, y'all see a video coming up here pretty soon, within the next couple of weeks or so maybe. I've got a, uh, a Big Chief. It's a smoker. Me and Karen love beef jerky, so I went out and bought a Big Chief and i um, practicing doing some smoking on it for some jerky. But it's great for fish and all kind of cheeses and stuff. Uh, so y'all be seeing that coming up. But I don't think that any one cooker's better. If, if anything, maybe for chicken. Did you mention chicken? Yeah, you did. Chicken is better cooked at higher temps, in my opinion. So you might want to opt for, you know, the, uh, I was going to say the Weber kettle. But, you know, something that you can get the temps up higher. I've done them on my Weber Smoky Mountain. I actually love leg quarters on my Weber Smoky Mountain. But at the end, I like to crank that heat up to like 300, 300, 325, I can't even talk. 300 or 325 Fahrenheit to crisp that skin up a little bit and kind of let some of that fat just kind of render out from under the skin. So, um... But no cooker really is that much better than the other. They all, they all can do what needs to be done if you've learned it. And as far as me, I've got so many pits and cookers here, I just choose one that I haven't used in a while. That's, that's purely how I do it, man. I just, I just try to keep from getting any dust on them, you know, get the cobwebs out, fire it up every once in a while. <laughs> Heck, even on my offset in the wintertime, I'll fire it up and I even put any meat on it, you know, just because I love that smell. Next question is from Phil McCracken. He says, Troy, shout out from Michigan. Hey, cheers to you. Appreciate that. Shout out to, to Michigan. All right, Phil says, love your videos. I've learned so much from your videos. I appreciate it. He says, do you have any comments or, on pros or cons of the lava rock door or the lava lock doors on the Weber Smoky Mountain? Cheers, brother. Hey, cheers again, Phil. Lava lock doors. I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking about. Uh, that's those ones that you bolt on, and it's got like a, a a thick, almost like a vault type door that bolts on to the outside of the Weber Smoky Mountain. So it's kind of standing out from the the ring part of the you know the the, the cylinder of the Smoky Mountain. I believe that's what you're talking about. And if that is what you're talking about, I don't really see a need for it. I, I think just the stainless steel door on the Weber Smoky Mountain is sufficient. I don't even use any kind of a gasket material on any part of my Weber Smoky Mountain. 
I mean, if you're really sensitive about losing temps or losing smoke, then yeah, yeah, go for it. But in my opinion, I, I have never used one, so this is just strictly my opinion. I've never seen one in person, maybe just on the website. I don't really think you need it. But, you know, depends on how much you want to spend and how much it's worth to you for your style of cooking. For me, I just like to roll with the flow. Anyway, I hope that helped. <laughs> All right, we've got two questions here that are from different people, and they're basically the same question. Let me go ahead and read them through. First one's from Rich Evans. He says, great video, Troy. Question for you. Since getting the slow and sear for your Weber Performer, do you find you're using the Weber Smoky Mountain less? And the similar question from LV. LV says, would you recommend a Weber Smoky Mountain or a kettle with the slow and sear? I would probably modif modify the Weber Smoky Mountain to also allow me to grill on it. So both options are good. I will primarily be smoking, though. Thank you again, and cheers, mate. Time for another beer. I'm drinking gin and tonic. Regards, Lawrence. Uh, P.S. I don't mind the longer videos at all. Hey, I appreciate that, Lawrence. Cheers to you, and cheers to Rich. I appreciate the questions, man. Oh, man, that's a good one. Um, I would say if you're not, if you're not cooking a lot, Weber, the, uh, the Weber kettle with the slow and sear is fantastic. If you're going to be cooking like... Um, different meats like pork butt and chicken or pork butt and brisket and stuff like that that's where the Weber Smoky Mountain shines because you can put a lot of meat on the two different grate levels whereas on the Weber kettle slow and sear is taking up maybe a third of that grill space unless you got like the big huge 26 inch you know uh, but the, the, the slow and sear takes up some of that grill space so you're losing grill space and it's not double layer I guess you could make it double layer if you wanted to if you had some like put some chicken down and then over that put another uh, rack, you know, a little, little cheap extra racks you can get and put in there and maybe put your pork butt or brisket on top of that But then you got to worry about the lid being able to close You know, so you may One other option. Well, I was fixing to say you can use the Weber Smoky Mountain lid on the Weber kettle That may work, but you'd have to have both of them If it were just you or maybe just you and the wife, you know a couple of people I'd say go with the kettle and get the slowest here If you're doing some bigger cooks go with the Weber Smoky Mountain Flavor-wise, they're both almost identical in all seriousness. The, the slow and sear makes the Weber kettle give the meat a flavor that is almost identical to the Weber Smoky Mountain. So you're not losing on flavor with either one of them. So it just kind of depends on how much you're wanting to cook. Uh, the same smoke flavors there, the same meat flavors there. Uh, the, everything flavor-wise is pretty much the same. just depends on how much real great space you need, how much meat you're putting on there. Hope that helped, guys. Appreciate the questions. Uh, another question from Jamie Satterley. Is that right? Yeah, we do. We got two questions from Jamie Satterley. I usually skim through and don't do two questions, but Jamie's been around a while. He's a good subscriber, a good brother of mine. Uh, like I said, man, we're all family out there, you know, so I appreciate the support all y'all give me and uh, all the kind words. I really do. All right, Jamie. Question two from Jamie today. He says, ever thought of doing a quick Facebook Live cook? Steaks, etc. Uh, be pretty cool. I'd tune in. <laughs> yeah, Jamie. Oh, man. Here, cheers to you again, Jamie. You know, this past weekend, I did, uh, I was doing something. Heck, what was it? I don't forgot. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to shoot videos ahead, so when I'm out of town for the grandbaby, I'll still have videos for you guys to watch, including the Thursday chats and stuff. <clears throat> so I'm trying to shoot ahead. I forget what I've done, but this past weekend, I did a, I did a cook. I did ribs. That's right, pork ribs. I did a uh, St. Louis and baby back. On, I think I did them on the Lone Star Grill. But I did a couple of uh, like videos and some pictures and stuff, and I was shooting that video footage and uh, pictures of the cook up to uh, to Facebook and Instagram. And uh, I could have I could have gone live. In fact, I think somebody asked me why don't I go live, and um, I just I wasn't wanting to do live. I just wanted to. To finish the cook and you know let y'all see what I was doing it turned out fantastic yeah I, I could do some Facebook live every once in a while I'm just not I'm not huge into the Facebook thing I'd rather do the live on YouTube to be honest with you <clears throat> all right next question is from Rico El Suave or Suave he says uh, T Roy love the channel so far I've been a subscriber for the last two years cool Rico I appreciate that brother here cheers to you He says, my question to you is, if you were to compete in a barbecue competition 
what category would you like to go compete? I'd have to say pork ribs, man. Yeah, some uh, St. Louis. That'd be my preference. I love me some ribs, man. I really, really do. Second would be brisket. That's a great question, too. I appreciate it, Rico, and thanks again for the support, bro. Next question is from Lassie's Food and Barbecue. Well, Lassie's got a YouTube channel, folks. I'll put a link for him up here or down in the description box. <laughs> so y'all go check out Lassie. He's got a great channel. He's uh, I forget where he's at, man. He's overseas. But a great channel. It's English, uh, so you can understand what he's saying. Uh, go check him out. Great, great cook, man. Great cook. Lassie says, have you ever smoked shrimp? He says, I'm considering doing it, but I can't really decide if I want to warm, warm. Can't really decide if I should warm or cold smoke them. Cheers. Cheers to you, Lassie. Cheers to you, bro. I would say uh, shrimp are really, really delicate. You know, kind of like fish. I think I would cold smoke them and then maybe grill them. So uh, I'd be my two cents. I don't think I'd warm smoke them because by the time they get... A lot of smoke in them like you want. They're going to be overcooked and rubbery. and I would just cold smoke. That'd be my answer. Give it a shot. Let me know if you hadn't done it already. <laughs> but anyway, I'm subscribed to Lassie. Y'all go check him out too. Great guy. Jonathan Inlay says, Hey, Troy, how do you store charcoal between cooks? I use the regular Kings for briquettes, and I found that if I leave the bag in my gazebo uh, out of the rain, it seems that the coals don't burn very well. Have you had this happen? Yes, I have had that happen, Jonathan, and it's because of the humidity in the air, man. It really is. Uh, the elements outside, especially humidity, will get into the briquettes and kind of make them not waterlogged, but make them not want to light right and not burn right. So I take mine, just leave them in the original Kingsford bag, put them out in the garage where they're protected from the elements. If you don't have something like that, maybe find a closet in your house somewhere where you can store them. Somewhere inside, you know, don't leave them outside in the elements. You know, even if it's covered under a gazebo and stuff, try to put your charcoal briquettes or lump charcoal for that matter, uh, or wood chunks, wood chips, put all that stuff somewhere where it's protected from the elements because humidity will wreak havoc on it, man. It really will. Appreciate the question, Jonathan. Cheers to you, my brother. There you go. <clears throat> all right, J Dog, another great Thursday chat. Quick question for you. What you got for me there, j Dog? Hey, cheers to you. Man, j Dog been around a long time. All you guys have, actually. Rich Evans, Lawrence LV, Phil McCrack, Jonathan Emley. Man, y'all been around a long time. Truly appreciate the love and the, the support, man. Where were we? j Dog. j Dog says, I've seen your cooking video where you cooked a chuck roast using Cajun, the Cajun Bandit Rotisserie on the way to Smoky Mountain. Have you tried any other cuts of roast, for example, top round or eye round on the Weber Smoky Mountain using the rotisserie? And if so, how did they compare to the chuck roast? Thanks in advance, and cheers to you, brother. Hey, cheers to you again, j Dog. Appreciate that, bro. You can definitely do other cuts. I found that for rotisserie cooking, you're better off getting a cut that's really, really marbled. It's got some fat in it. So that fat, as it's spinning around on the rotisserie, that fat's... Uh, rendering out and getting juices all over the outside of your meat and helping it get a nice color and a nice bark and also helping keep the inside juicy. Eye around is really, really lean. And uh, what was the other one? Top around. Top around may be doable, but eye around is very lean, man. I don't know if I would do that. If you do, you'd cook it almost like you would a, a, a filet, a, you know, a, a tenderloin. That's how I would do it. And you might want to inject it, too, you know, or wrap it in bacon or something to protect it, man, because it doesn't have very much fat at all. Go with a fatty cut, bro. Get your fatty roast. That'd be the way to do it on rotisserie. Love rotisserie cooking, though, man. I actually forgot I had a rotisserie from a Weber Smoky Mountain. Yeah, I need, I need to pull that baby out. That's good times, man, good times. All right, folks, uh, that's it. That's all I got for the questions. I did want to throw out there that I play Pokemon Go, as many of you know. And Sal was asking me recently what level I am nowadays. I just made level 39, so I'm about a quarter of the way reached up to level 40. So I've still got three quarters of a level to go to reach level 40. So I'm doing pretty good with that. But I wanted to mention, yesterday they came out with the, uh, the new special uh, quests to catch, the, uh, to catch Celebi. 
and I'm on part two of that quest, all right? I've completed part one. It's, there's eight parts. I completed part one this morning. I'm on part two. Part of part two, one of the things you have to do to progress to the third quest is to have three friends, all right? You got to join up with three friends. It's hard for me to have time to go out and get friends. I mean, I've got, you know, Tom Jones is playing. And Sal, I don't have your, uh, you're not a friend of my, uh, you know, trainer buddy of mine out there yet. We need to hook up. We need to trade numbers. But that's my point. If any of you are playing Pokemon Go and you get to that point on the Ripple of Time, they call it. It's part two of eight, Catching Celebi. And you need three friends. I will put my code down in the description box. My trainer code. All right? When you get to that point, you can add me as a friend, all right? Assuming I don't have my friends list, you know, overwhelmed already. <clears throat> I think I got 16 friends right now, but I added them all before I got this quest. So now I need three more. So Sal, I'm calling you out, bro. Send me your, your uh, you know, check the description box. Get my trainer code and hit me up. We, let's be friends. And if any of you out there play and you get to that point, you know, don't add me as a friend before. Add me as a friend afterwards. And if you are also on step two of the quest and you need a friend, those three friends, put it in the comments section down below what your trainer code is and I'll add you. Because, like I said, I added 16 friends before I got to this quest. So those friends don't count. I've got to have three, three new ones. Anyway, that's all I wanted to get out there. <laughs> Y'all check the description box. Check out Lassie. Uh, again, up here or down in the description box, whichever I decide to do there. Appreciate y'all joining me, and uh, I'm sorry I, I didn't go live this time. I will let you know, though, if you see me put out an event reminder on uh, on my channel, or if you click the, the notification icon, you get an email saying that I'm putting out an event reminder, that means I'm going live. If I don't do one, it's probably just going to be one of these taped chats, okay? So I hope, hope we keep that straight. We'll see how it goes. I'm still playing around with it, and I'm still trying to prep for going uh, mobile, you know, remotely, working on that. But anyway, thank you all for joining. I truly, truly appreciate all the support. Love each and every one of you. Cheers to all of you. If you got questions, ask them in the comments section down below. I'd appreciate it. I'll add them to a future chat for you. And um, I think that's about it. Y'all give me some thumbs up if you like it. Hope you subscribed. If you're not, click the little bell icon to remind you by email that I've got a new video or a scheduled event coming. And folks, I hope y'all share this this video and all my videos, if you would. Share them on social media, if you want, or uh, with your friends and family. Just tell them about old T-Roy. And I'm still working on getting some shirts and hats and stuff, so y'all hang tight. That's not too far, maybe two, two months down the line. So merchandise is coming. I'm just trying to tweak the logo and stuff. Uh, so that's coming, but uh, yeah. Thumbs up, sub, hit the like button, hit the notification button, share the video. And when you do, please tell all your friends that T-Roy cooks responsibly. Cheers, everybody. Appreciate y'all joining us. We'll see y'all next Tuesday with another chat. That's a wrap. <laughs>